I really wish the people uh, that, that look sort of with anger at, at the weirdos, at the happenings, at the psychedelic freakout, would instead of just looking with anger, just look with nothing and with no feeling, you know, be unbiased about it. Because they really don't realize that what these people are talking about is something that they really want themselves. It's something that everyone wants. You know, it's personal freedom to be able to talk and be able to say things. And it's dead straight. It's a real sort of basic pleasure for everyone. But it looks weird from the outside. In the mid-1960s, the rigid and colourless British way of life was irrevocably transformed by the emergence of the underground movement, a loose collective of young radicals who introduced new social, sexual and aesthetic perspectives. Operating out of the heart of London, their various activities, from the newspaper The International Times to the psychedelic club UFO, promoted alternative lifestyles and values and sparked a cultural revolution. I think there was a feeling of tremendous energy and creativity. The International Times was starting. It's got these people who were clearly know what they're doing and have really original, wonderful ideas. And the music that's around it, that too is completely original, really good. You just felt like this has got to explode in some way. This film not only traces the history of this underground scene, but also explores its impact on the preeminent British band of the era, the Beatles. Although they were well established by the time the movement emerged, Paul McCartney in particular was closely linked with several of its key players, and through his exposure to cutting-edge concepts, brought ideas directly from the avant-garde into the mainstream. He was just this great accumulator of ideas and, uh, and how to produce different effects. He digested things, that was what was so great. Instead of just instant reuse, he digested it and turned it into Beatles music, basically. They were probably the most avant-garde rock band at the time in Britain, but they were also uh, the most commercial on earth. 